data collection is something that happens in the field. And data processing is something that often happens after the fact. Most of the discoveries we make are actually when we're back on land, when it's actually too late to do a lot about them. So normally um, we're only really aware of the kind of data we've collected after the fact when we process the data. But on this cruise, because we're processing the data between the deployments of underwater vehicles, we're making hopefully the best informed decisions we can make. What makes this cruise quite unique is that we're using the observations of one vehicle to inform the deployment of the subsequent vehicles. So our workflow is that we first send out AE2000F, which is our scout AUV, and it goes and collects maps uh, to, uh, over very large areas. So when AE comes back out of the water, we have about 30,000 images to look through. Um, to inform our next dive. But obviously this is too time consuming for us to do by hand, so that's why we have algorithms to cluster these images into similar looking areas and give us an information summary that we can act on. And then the next phase is Tuna Sand is programmed to go to the areas of most interest to make observations in about 10 times higher resolution. And the ROV is going down and making um, visual observations, but we're also making chemical measurements of what's going on in the water column, but also underneath in the sediments. We're very much working around traditional workflows, but in the future, I think that if we can trust these algorithms enough, it should be possible to change traditional workflows and have these robots informing each other of what they've seen in real time making decisions without the aid of a human in the loop. So there's a gas hydrate field about 800 meters beneath where I'm standing right now. And this is where we have methane gas kind of trapped underground. Um, so we have these cold seeps. So we have bacterial mats, which in turn have lots of uh, biological activity with larger creatures around them. So with our first deployment um, with the AE, we were studying some holes that were drilled during one of the ODP, Ocean Drilling Program expeditions. And one of the discoveries we made is something that we think may be a whale fall. So the algorithms picked up on this and then we went and made more detailed observations to try and get some more data to confirm this using Tunisan and also the ROV Sebastian. There's absolutely no guarantee when you're over a gas hydrate field that that data is going to be uh, the most up-to-date information that we can use. That's why it's very important to have these um, algorithms that can process the observations that we make one day and that we can act and deliver on them the next day. So hopefully this will be the first cruise where we, where we look back on it in six months time, we don't have any regrets regarding the data collection. So the ocean is changing on, over multiple scales. It's changing over multiple spatial scales, mo multiple temporal scales as well. And oceanographers have a variety of tools at their disposal to study things that happen over long time scales or events that take place in a single location. But where we're a lot more limited is when we try to understand events that are taking place over large areas and at fast uh, temporal resolutions as well. So hopefully we are contributing to the tool set of um, of techniques available to oceanographers to study a kind of phenomenon that they've really had trouble addressing in the past. Uh, I think the team did brilliantly and I'm always proud of how they perform. And in the end, I think we've managed to collect one of the best data sets we've ever collected as a team. So it's very accessible, easy to visualize and appreciate. So hopefully it will help um, make marine science more accessible to, uh, to the broader public.